Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another video about Zego Cloud. As usual, always save your time from rebuilding some busy stuffs, which could have just been a single import statement. This time around, I'll be showing you how to build a live audio room kit with in-app chat functionality. I've already made a video about how to integrate the video and voice collab, and also the live streaming app in both React Native and Flutter. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. So, with that said, let's jump right in. So let's start by creating a Flutter app with Flutter create command and give the name of our app, which I'll name it as Live Audio App. So in here, to we'll start creating the project. And to actually see this working on your terminal, you need to have the Flutter installed. So once that is done, you need to change the directory to the Live Audio App and also open that in VS Code with code in a period. So these are basically the files and folders you see when you generate a Flutter project. And the source code is basically found within the lib folder. We have the main of that file. So I'll choose my emulator in here and run the app. So the default code comes with a counter app. When you click on the floating action button there, the value there gets increased. So let's start to integrate our live audio. So first of all, we need to head towards the Zego Cloud Admin Console to get our app ID and also the app sign. So we need to create a project for that to access our app ID and our app sign. So I'll start to create my project in here and we need to select a use case for our app. So I'll choose the live audio room and also click on the next button and give the name of our project, which I will name it as the live audio app. And also start with the UI kit. So in here to start just creating your live audio app project on the console so you can have access to your app ID and also the app sign. So once you have that set up, you need to start building your app. And I'll build for Flutter in here. So you need to save and integrate. There we go. So in here, you can have access to our app ID and also our app sign. You can also click to go to the admin console. So we need to activate the in-app chat service. So under your project management settings, you need to choose the project you just created and click on the service management tab. You can have access to the in-app chat in here, so you need to activate that. And you need to click on the ready to activate button. So we have our in-app chat service being activated. So let's head towards the documentation and continue. So the next step is to integrate the SDK and to do that we need to add the Zego UI kit pre-built live audio room as a dependency. So we need to copy that and paste within our terminal and install that dependency. So once we have that installed, as usual, when we check the password.yml file where we get to see our installed dependency, you can see our dependency has been added. That the Zego UI kit pre-built live audio room has been added. Once you have our dependency installed, you need to import the SDK. So I'll copy that in here and start. So I'll just get rid of the comments in here and also the default code so basically within the home I'll be returning the live audio page which is not yet created I'll be creating it sooner so I'll be returning the live audio page in here and that's going to be a stateless widget so I'll just import my package the Zego UI kit pre-built live audio so 
Using the live audio room, you need to have access to the user ID and also the user name and the room ID. And the room ID represents the live audio room you want to join. So basically, I'll just copy the code here. I'll just copy the code here and paste below that. And that's going to return the live audio page. So the live audio page takes in the room ID as an argument, so we need to provide that. So I'll just start with some numbers as the room ID one two three four. You can just configure it according to your business logic. So we need to get our app ID and also the app sign. So I'll head towards the admin console to get access to that. Just go to the project session. And also, in here, I'll have access to the app ID. So I'll copy that. And within the code, I'll just replace that with the app ID. And we also need to have access to our app sign. So I already, I also have my app sign in here. So I'll copy that as well. And also replace it with our app sign. So the next step is to configure our project within our Android. So first of all, we need to change the compiled SDK version to 33. So within your Android folder, within the app, the build.gradle file, you have access to the compiled SDK version. You need to modify and change that to 33 and saving the changes. And the next one is to set the main SDK version to 21. So within that same directory, the build.gradle file within the app, we need to set the main SDK version to 21. Okay, there it is. We need to change that to 21 and save any changes. We need to add the following permissions to our app. So I'll just copy that in here. So within the Android, the app folder, the source folder, the main folder, you have access to the android.manifest file here. So I'll just paste in the following permissions and saving the changes. So we need to create a file name as the proguardrules.pro within our app. And paste below the content just to prevent the obfuscation. So within your Android, the app I will create a file, and that file is going to be named as proguardrules.pro. That's the extension. I need to save the changes and paste in below the code prevent obfuscation. So once you have that, you need to save in the changes. And also, we need to add the following config code to the release part of our project. So within your Android app build.gradle, we need to copy this code and paste it under the release part. So I'll show you that. So within your code, the Android folder, the app folder, the build.gradle file, under the release part, we need to add that code. So under that, we need to paste in the code and just save in the changes. So that's basically it for setting up Android. So with the iOS, since I'm not having access to the Mac machine, it's basically a simple step. You can go ahead and do that and get back to it. So. So before returning the uh, live audio page, I'll just create two buttons here and that two buttons is going to be placed within the column widget so with the children as an argument the first child of this column is going to be an elevated button with an unpressed argument and also testing the child and the child is going to test in a test widget with a test of start live so if you're going to start live meaning you're going to be the one hosting so and the next one so i'll just copy that 
for the next button and the test of this is going to be watch life you're going to watch life we are going to be one of the audience meaning we are not going to host that so we need to set the main as this alignment to main as this alignment the center so we can have it centered you know, so we need to wrap the column widget within a center widget there we go so since you're not returning the scaffold that's why we're having a back, black background so i'll wrap the center widget within the widget known as the scaffold and the scaffold is in the body not the child so i'll change that to body and save any changes so we can have access to our white background there we go so the scaffold is in many arguments such, such as the app bar so i'll just return our app bar widget in here and the app bar also takes in an argument it is in the title and i'll set that to a test widget with a test of live audio I'm just saving the changes as you can see it's over there so let's add functionality to the home press button so I'll just create a method here that will jump base whether you're going to be the host or you're going to be one of the audience so it just takes in the room ID and checks whether it's host or not and navigate to the live audio page it takes in the room ID and checks whether it's host or not so the on press of this function is basically going to return the method jump to live page that takes in the room ID so I'll just have custom room ID in here it also takes in its host which is a boolean and checks whether you are going to be the one hosting or not so I'm going to set that to true and also we need to pass in our contest so once we have that I'll just copy that and replace with the unpress of this one changing in the host to be false if you decide to watch a live meaning you are going to watch you are going to be one of the member and also changing the room ID here so we need to return the arrow function of this so I also change in the username here and also the user ID once that is done we're saving the changes and just run the app to see what we have so far so I'll decide to go live and see we get an error navigator operation requested with a contest that does not include the navigator the reason why the error is thrown is because the navigator is unable to access the navigator from the material app and to solve this issue we need to wrap the scaffold with a builder and pass in the contest so i will do that So once we have that, let's save any changes and restart our app and start life again. So start live. You can see we've been navigated to the live audio page. So since I started live, I'm the one hosting. So you can see the host badge on me. So you can have the chatting functionality in here, the muting, and also it also checks the number of people who just joined we also have the in-app chat functionality in here it works perfectly you can just see hello everyone boom everything just happened so it also has this audio effect so if you're interested and happy to see more from Zego cloud you can just leave a comment in the session below see you in our next tutorial until then stay tuned